everybody having a good time so far? Right on. Right on. So I am a comedian. Otherwise known as an attention whore. And I have this crazy self-esteem thing where I hate and loathe myself, but I still think I'm better than all of you. <laughs> and this one time I had my shit together, I was like five. And last week I killed my cactus. It is so good to find out you are less nurturing than a desert. <laughs> So I've been hanging out with the fellow fine individuals at Addictive Comedy. You know, fine. Fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> and they're addicts, if you didn't get a gist of that by now. <laughs> Turns out I'm one of them. <laughs> Who knew? Literally anyone who's ever looked at me <laughs> knew I was an addict of cocaine, of course. <laughs> and by show of applause out there, who here in the audience has a smartphone or uses social media? I better see everyone clapping out there. So congratulations, folks. You're in good company. That makes us all addicts. Let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> I didn't want to cheat cheat, but I'm going to. Hey. That's where I am. So I recently started attending Overeaters Anonymous meetings. Thank you. <laughs> and I went into my first meeting and they started talking about inventory and I went, oh. So I started listing the things in my pantry. Doritos, <laughs> Oreo cookies. <laughs> They're like, no, not that kind of inventory. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> the things I found amusing about Overeaters Anonymous. The meeting is held in a church basement. <laughs> That's original. And then I went to my first meeting and I was sitting there and all of a sudden they pulled out some food. And I remember thinking, have I come to the wrong meeting? <laughs> I am pretty sure if you go to an NA meeting, they don't let you have your cocaine on the table. <laughs> oh, but what the heck? Pass that lemon loaf. <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> started thinking, well, other programs in the anonymous versions, they celebrate things, milestones, with cake. <laughs> uh, I am pretty sure that's not going to happen at over <laughs> anonymous. So then I started thinking, well, what are they going to celebrate that milestone with? Well, here, Betty, here's your one-year cauliflower. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Have any of you heard of the show, My Strange Addiction? It's on TLC, otherwise known as The Learning Channel, where you can also catch shows like Dog the Bounty Hunter, Swamp People, maybe a little Honey Boo Boo. Needless to say, I kept watching My Strange Addiction, and I wondered to myself, well, how does one get these addictions? like the woman that likes to drink laundry detergent. Mm. Far before teenagers made it cool. <laughs> and the woman that likes to eat cat treats. Have you ever smelled them? Like who would put that in their mouth? <laughs> but my favorite was the woman that liked to eat Jiprock. Now for those of you who do not know what Jiprock is, it is the thing that the walls are made of. And I wondered to myself, well, how does one come up upon this addiction? Oh, I see a little wall over there and it's exposed. <laughs> Walk over and take a little bit off the corner. 
and taste it. <laughs> and then like it so much, it becomes a full-blown addiction. <laughs> Next thing you know, I gotta move my furniture around so that I can hide that I've eaten half my walls. <laughs> oh dear. So then I started thinking, well, at least my addiction is socially acceptable. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> Let me explain how I think that all seats are discriminatory. <laughs> like, for instance, I will not even go into a restaurant if it has a bistro in the name. Because I know they're going to have flimsy-ass seats. You know the ones. Two metal prongs and a frisbee on top. <laughs> that are clearly not going to support me through my meal. <laughs> And I think, well, that's very short-sighted, and then they serve food. You would think that they'd be more careful about having seating that support people who so obviously love food. <laughs> oh, and then there's girls. Where you're gonna get seated by a hostess named Sydney. And as we walk over towards the booth, my favorite kind of seating, <laughs> and I break into a cold sweat <laughs> because I have seat anxiety. We walk over and she says, will this be okay? <laughs> and I think to myself, should have brought some olive oil to get me in there. <laughs> but now I'm like, sure, thanks. <laughs> well, I figure the only way that I'm getting in there is if I stand on top of the seat and I'll shimmy my way in. <laughs> Well, that'll be graceful. <laughs> you think that's good? Wait till I have to get out. <laughs> now that I am in the booth, snug as a rug, and half on the table, I'm gonna order a $32 salad because you put a beet in it. <laughs> I don't think so. And I wonder to myself, why do people get so weird? Like I go to sit next to someone and they get all squirmish. I'm like, it's okay, it isn't contagious. <laughs> the other day I was driving down the road and in my rear view mirror, I see this guy shaking his fist at me. I can tell that he's yelling things and I'm open my window so that I can hear what he's saying. He's like, oh, I'm gonna make your life a living hell. I'm like, no thanks, I'm not looking for a relationship right now. <laughs> Thank you. Do any of you remember keying your boyfriend's truck, your ex-boyfriend's truck? Yeah. And then getting back together? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> so I'm a little worried about the 20-somethings. I have three of them, so I consider myself a little bit of an expert. And my daughter comes running in the house the other day, and she's like, Mom, my phone is ringing. What do I do? I was like, where the fuck did I fail? <laughs> um, perhaps you could answer it? Where the thought? <laughs> She leaves the room, answers the phone, comes back. She's like, clearly, that woman is from a different era. Does she not know that we don't use phones for phone calling anymore? I'm like, oh dear. <sighs> Parenting fail. So I'm going to explain to you how to tie the world's tightest knot. Take your earbuds, place them in your purse or pocket, <laughs> wait for one minute. And I believe that parenting comes in stages. Stage one you, is ownership. You own that little baby, you do what you want. Stage two is more like management, policies, procedures, expectations, consequences. <laughs> and then there's stage three, which is consulting. <laughs> Where on the other side, they call it, F you, I'll do it my way. Thank you. <laughs> and so the smartphone has moved into the, oh, pardon me, into the number one handheld device. I say, take that penis.
my boyfriend says to me, why don't you ever tell me when you orgasm? I said, because you don't like me to call you at work. <laughs> That's my time, folks. Thank you for coming.